insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 59, A Tribute to Dorian. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my co-host and slightly composed uh, daughter, uh, Madison Whalen, uh, here is with us. Hi. And uh, joining us today for a special guest appearance is Mommy Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. Guess I it helps if you I should actually. take everybody off mute, otherwise they're all on my mind. <laughs> okay, I got too many buttons to push today because we've yeah. got so many presentations well, to do. you know. <laughs> so, okay. Yes, today is a tribute to Dorian. Mm-hmm. Um, she passed away actually shortly after 
the podcast last week. Uh, when we came out of the podcast, uh, she was having some. She was having some some medical issues, difficulties breathing. Um, <clears throat> why don't you just walk us through uh, how last week went, mommy? Um, so last week was you know a normal week. Um, you know, we because of the uh, school being you know on remote learning and. You know, I was working from home. Madison and I were, were home, you know, all day. And um, Friday morning we noticed Dorian just wasn't herself. Um, now, she's had various medical uh, issues. Um, she was blind at this point in her life. And we knew she had some sort of, like, arthritis because of the way that she walked. She had had a stroke, or what we assume she had had a stroke many months ago too but you know overall still getting around still doing her her cat things um and friday morning she just wasn't herself um she was laying in the hallway and like not just like sitting laying like just laying flat down and she was open mouth breathing um and cats don't do that so you know that it's something wrong and she didn't want to really eat. We brought her um, some treats. She ate a couple of them. She didn't really want to drink anything. She did go to the litter box, you know. And at one point, she actually just laid in the litter box when, when she was done. Um, so I had called the vet. And unfortunately, our normal vet wasn't available. She was off that day. So they had suggested, you know, calling another vet and, you know, or taking her to an animal hospital. Um, so at first I was like, well, let's just kind of see how it is because she's, you know, she had a a cold couple months back. She had that cat, (laughs) um, the ring around the room spinning thing where, where she would just walk around in a circle. Right. Um, you know, so, and most things, you know, couple of days and she's kind of back to normal. This was not something that was gonna, was going to be fixed just without medical attention. Right. Um, so you guys came up to, to do your podcast and I was sitting with her and, and she was, you know, just not herself. I tried cuddling with her and she actually jumped off of the couch, jumped off of me and just laid on the floor. And that was when I knew she had to go to the hospital and we had to see. So, so the problem that she really had was that she was having difficulty breathing. She was having difficulty breathing. So, so we didn't really know. So there was a part of me that was hoping it was a quick, easy fix. Yeah. But there was that other part of me that knew that she was, you know. Yeah. At the end of things. So, so so we took her to the animal hospital. We took her to an animal hospital we had never been to before. And, um, you know, they they were great, you know. Um, unfortunately, because Dorian's blind, like, she doesn't, you know, she couldn't see who was, you know, doing anything to her. So she did kind of have, like, a little panic attack, they said. They did have to, you know, sedate her. Um she was having issues breathing, so they actually put her on oxygen, um, which, you know, is, is basically they put them in a cage that, right. you know, there, there's oxygen. It's like an oxygen tent for cats, yeah, basically. Yeah, you know. Um, you know, and, and the vet came out and, and spoke with us, um, and she said, you know, that they'd have to, you know, do certain procedures to really find out what's wrong because they couldn't really tell Um, you know, they were pretty sure it was one of two things. It was either heart failure or it was cancer. Right. And you had discovered a lump on her neck a while back. uh, Probably a couple of weeks ago when I was petting her, I did feel a lump. And it was one of those. She was an older cat. And as long as she was comfortable and she didn't seem to be in pain, I didn't want to put more stress on her because she already had high blood pressure. Right, right. And anytime the vet had been out to see her, she would always, you know, 
because again, because she was blind, you know, because cats in general don't like doctors. Most people don't like doctors. Um, so because she was blind, you know, her, her I will heart say would though, be of, elevated. of all of our cats, she was probably the less prone to spazzing out. Oh, absolutely. Than oh, the other well, cats. and and the other cats because our our vet is actually um, they make house calls, and our other two cats actually have to be sedated in yeah. order for the vet to drug eat. the cats so you can treat them. <laughs> Whereas Dorian, you know, Dorian would always be like, oh, whatever, I'm here. Um, you know, so unfortunately, you know, as she got older, you know, she would freak out a little bit more. Um, so that was obviously putting strain on on everything, you know, as well. Um, so as it was a very hard decision to make, I knew it's what she would have wanted. Right. You know, if we had done all the tests, money being no option, you know, if, if money was not even a factor in it. And, you know, just the fact that she would have had to stay one or two nights for observation and have all these different procedures and be, you know, we really don't know how old, old she was. Um, I don't know if she would have even made it through any of those right. procedures to even find out what, what was wrong. Um, so ultimately, we made the decision, based on the doctor's recommendation, really, to, to put her down. Right. Um, which the doctor said was probably the the best idea, right? And and that kind of made it feel a little bit better, right? Um, you and, know, to to do it that way. And that's that's I mean, that's always a difficult decision with a pet. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you and I have had to make that decision with parents as well, right? So it's 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 a burden, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to make today's episode a cry fest although you know the video kind of helps with that but but i wanted us to celebrate you know our memory of dorian and all mm-hmm. the good times we had so you had mentioned that we don't know how old she is explain to us why we don't so we moved into our house in let's see what one when did we move in uh, she was three. She was three. So ten years ago, ten years ago, we moved into the house, um, and you know, every now and then you you'd get some random animal, you know, wander wandering, you know, across your lawn or whatever. And it was around uh, the beginning of December of two thousand and ten, and this gray cat started coming around. Um, and, you know, snowy weather and, you know, and uh, being that we, we had, you know, a cat. At that point, we only had had Fluffer. Right. We, didn't, we only had uh, the one cat. I left food out for her. So we had cat food. You know, right. We, we had to take care of right, cats. Right. We, we were a cat family. Um, and we started, you know, leaving her food. And uh, she would, you know, come around and we'd see her, you know, once a day. And, and then, you know. We'd see her every couple of days and, you know, and she would just sit on our deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah She'd was, sit up on the railing. She would sit up on the railing, I think. Um, and, and I think we started feeding her like every morning or we would give her You'd treats or something. Stuff out, yeah. I'd lead stuff out. And <laughs> she would start stalking us because she would sit up on on the deck on, on the railing because she could look into the kitchen. Yep. And she would like. Yeah. And as soon as she saw a movement, she would be out there meowing at us. Yep. Um, we even tried, you know, because it was the winter time. we even tried making like a shelter for her. If you remember, we had gotten like a, a covered um, a litter, litter box, box right. cover just so that, you know. she wouldn't come in the house at the right, time. Right, she wouldn't come in the house. You know, we tried coaxing her in to, to come in and she she was happy sitting outside. Um, and the way that our, our front porch is, there's a, a little bit of an overhang. So a lot of times when it would be raining, she would just be sitting, you know, under, you know. She'd sit on the railing uh, under the overhang so she didn't so get wet. So she didn't get wet. Um, or she would sit the way that our, our house is. Um, it kind of sticks out on on the bottom, you know, by the ground right. and stuff. And she would actually sit there as well if it was raining. Because we had a snow. comfortable little mulch area there that she would right, make a nest Right, And in. she would just kind of sit there or, you know. And so how, she, how old do you think she was when she started coming around? She was probably 
she wasn't a kitten. She was definitely a a, a grown cat. She was um, a big cat too. Yeah, she, she was, was always yeah, cat. she was always a, a big cat. So I would say she was probably already four or five. Right. So if you figure that, and you figure we had, you know, she had us really for almost ten years. She, you know, she was probably yeah. fifteen or so, and. And that's that's good for a cat, and especially after all the different health issues, yeah. you know that that she had, she she led a really good life. So, Maddie, you were three when she started coming around. What what are your earliest memories of her? Um, I think some of my earliest memories of her were when, like, I remember when she was able to go inside. Um, when she did eventually come inside um i would go out with her and we would just play in the dirt and i'd always remember i'd brush off her fur because i didn't want her to get dirty yeah yeah because she would roll around in the leaves and yeah stuff. she always liked rolling around in in the dirt and and stuff and yeah and uh, i remember when you would go out and play like dorian would follow her around yep. in, in the backyard and she was like a little guardian angel to yeah, you. she'd yeah. follow you around and make sure that you know nothing happened to you when you were outside because they think she kind of sensed how paranoid mommy and daddy were letting you outside and stuff like that she always kind of you know if you were outside playing she'd either be with you or she'd be sitting across the street at the neighbors watching you right yeah, right she was I always mean, watching yeah i mean like at one point in the video you see that i'm drawing on the sidewalk and you just see like Doyen is just sitting next to me watching me making sure like nothing's happening to me and also like checking out my early some of my early art <laughs> right yeah she was your she was her earliest fan right yeah yep so so let's kind of take it back a notch and and think of some of the experiences that we've had with Dorian, like some of the some of the best stories that we've had, not the bad ones. We'll get <laughs> we'll to save, those. We'll okay. save that one. Um, oh, but but what's what's your favorite memory of Dorian, Maddie? Um, I actually have a few. So okay. first is when she used to actually. Um, so at one point when she was blind, uh, she, um, this actually happened for a while, um, a few months back at least. Um, she would, whenever we really like ate at our table, um, she would like come up on the chair and like, she'd ask for food. And well, no, she wouldn't ask for it. She had her own chair. <laughs> oh yeah. And she was served. <laughs> yeah. Um, she wouldn't ask for food. Um, she, she would simply expect it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We were the wait staff. Yeah, so um um we have a chair that mommy you have a chair next to you and um she would go up there and she had like a thing on where like she'd go on the table, like she'd smell the food at right. that point and she'd be like, Okay, I want food and like a few times she ended up licking your plate. Yep. Yeah. That's and mine. I licked yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that was it's her mine logic. Now. That yeah. was her logic. Like when she licked something, it was hers, and right. technically it was because no one <laughs> it else became won. hers. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. What about you, mommy? What do you? What, what do you? What? What's a fond memory you have of her? Um. I think before she, you know, would would come in side because she it took her almost a year till till she decided you know she wanted to come in. And even then, she would come in just to to eat, and then she'd be standing at the door to to go back out. Um, and we pretty much within I don't know the first <laughs> couple of of months, we called her Dorian because she was gray. She was gray. Dorian gray. Well, but and when those... she was coming around, we didn't really check to see if she was a boy or a girl. Right, we couldn't really tell until a little bit later when we were like, oh, look, you're a girl. Well, Dorian's fine. And Dorian was good because it was gender neutral. Right, right. She was gender neutral. And what was funny was I started, you know, talking to her and calling her that or, or whatever. And I remember there was one day, you know, we had gotten home from work and from school and I went and I was like, Dorian. And all of a sudden you see her come out from the woods behind. Phew, 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 yep. and, and she knew her she name. She knew her name. Yeah. You know, she was like, <laughs> oh that's who i am and you know and you know she would come and and uh you know get her her food and and stuff like that so that that was definitely you know it was like all right 
And and then when she did finally, you know, decide to come in, I don't know if you remember, but there was the one morning where I found a tick on myself because that was the thing. She she did end up with, you know, ticks on yeah. her until we, we put a collar, a flea collar on her, a mm. flea and tick collar. And you were like, nope, she's outside. <laughs> and yeah. I was like really upset that, you know, because she was already coming in it. And it was funny because she would come in at night. She would sleep either on our bed or on Maddie's bed. Right. And um, so my logic was all of our other cats were indoor cats. Right. So she wasn't like coming in and like staying downstairs. She was in bed sleeping with us. Right. Because also by that point, we ended up with Leota and, and Dorothy. Correct. Um, so at one point we had the four cats, you know, in, in the house and stuff. But Dorian never stayed in. She basically stayed in for the night. And first thing in the morning, she'd standing right. at the door waiting to to go out and then when we'd come home you know like she went out to work <laughs> yeah yeah that was funny <laughs> she'd go out to her day job and then as soon as we came home she'd be sitting like meow well, where you see, been <laughs> and that's sort of one of the one of the fond memories that i have is that when we used to go out whether we were coming home from work or coming home from vacation or whatever it was coming home from shopping she'd hear us coming down the street and wherever she was sitting, she'd come out and she would wait for us mm. at the bottom of the driveway. Yep. And because I used to, when I would come home, I would park around the side. So I didn't pull into the driveway. So she would come down the driveway knowing it was my car. And then like she'd meow at me like she was all mad that I wasn't pulling into the driveway. <laughs> and she had to run around to the side to follow me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. So yeah, she was she was very protective of all of us. Yeah, definitely. She you know she definitely chose chose us. Yeah, you know. And that's the other thing you know we've we've talked about many times. You know we we adopted Dorothy and Leota, our other two cats. But I think hands down, Dorian adopted us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know she was here before we got here. And she kind of accepted us into her family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think you and I agree that she probably was not a feral cat. Right. She she definitely was somebody's cat just because she, you know, she was very friendly, never once bit any of us, never once scratched any of us. Right. Um, you know, if she attacked anybody, it would be at the other cats, you know, she fought with. Right. And she you know. wasn't tentative about coming to us. She, like, mm -mm. like she was cautious like anyone would right, be to right. strangers. But she didn't have any problems coming to us. Yeah. But I did want to talk briefly about um, her friendliness. She was a very friendly cat. Mm -hmm. She was not only friendly, but she was a grateful cat. Mm -hmm. And she was grateful because we fed her. So periodically she would provide sustenance <laughs> for us. Oh, uh, right. so, she wanted to pay so it the, forward. The area that we live in, there's a couple of wooded areas near us, so there's some some <laughs> forest forest wildlife little fairy creatures. Yep. Uh, we had bunnies and we had mice and we have a few other things around. And birds. And and birds. Um, so Dorian was a hunter. Sure. <laughs> and she was pretty good at it. And occasionally when she had an excess of prizes from her hunt, she would occasionally leave them on our driveway or our sidewalk. <laughs> Tell yeah. us about For that, Dor uh, uh, Madison. <laughs> okay, so I remember a few times when I was coming, when, like, Mommy had picked me up from maybe, like, Maybe it was second grade or, um, I think it was when I was in Central. Okay. Um, you would pick me up and it was like, and we would like pull up into the driveway, I'd get out and like right in front of me, I would see like either a bunny or a bird. Yep. Or yep. Partially a, eaten. Partially eaten. You know, just enough to subdue it. <laughs> right. <laughs> And uh, that was her offering to us. Right. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, zombie bunny. Okay, let, you go inside, sweetie. Mommy has to go get a plastic bag and take care of this. And then there would be Dorian. Oh, good, good girl. Like, are you happy with my offering? Is this enough for some more treats tonight? I killed it. You cook it. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but I think. I think overall, uh, thanks to her adopting us, I think she had a 
probably a much better life. Like I can only imagine how difficult uh, her life would have been with the medical issue she ran into had she not been with us. Mm-hmm. Um, because after she had what we assume is the stroke and right. she lost her sight and she wasn't getting around, she became a house cat against, you know, her wishes. Right. Because up until then, she was still going out. Yeah. You know, for a little bit, you know, and, and she didn't go out for very long. She would go out, smell the flowers, go eat some grass, and then, you know, come back inside. So, Mommy, tell us a little bit about why you kept her in at that point, despite, you know, her desire to go out. Well, because I, I was afraid she was going to get hurt, you know, and especially once she had, because when she had, she had the stroke first. And she could still see um, at that point, but she had, you know, she was definitely having difficulty moving. And we don't live on a very busy street, but there are some neighbors that that tend to speed faster than others. And I was really concerned for her going outside because she did like to cross the street to go into the woods that are across from us uh, to hunt or, or do whatever, you know, it is that she did. So I was really concerned about her, her doing that. Um, so <laughs> the, the one summer after she had had the stroke, um, she would have supervised <laughs> uh, time out, uh, you know, outside. I would take her outside and I would watch where she would go. And she would just kind of look at me like, meow, I can do that. And I'd be like, no. And then as soon as she would start going to the street, I would go in and stand in front of her. And fortunately, since she, you know, wasn't her normal self, she didn't like dart off, you know, and run. She, right. she was a lot slower, you know, so I could control her and I would tell her no you need to stay here you need to stay on the grass you need to stay on our property and then she would just sit there and like right. at me <laughs> so yeah. so we've had a couple of of colorful incidents with her <laughs> colorful um, yeah, I'm, colorful I'm wonderful colorful. wording mm-hmm. so Maddie tell us about the time that we moved your bedroom and how the effect that it had on her. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so at the time I mo- we moved my bedroom and we turned my bedroom into the studio, um, she was blind at that point, and she had been blind for a few months, for the last few months that I was in here. Um, and she had actually had a little spot, because my bed was up high because we had multiple mattresses on it, and um, there was this one little spot um, in between my dresser and my bed and um we had had a blanket there and she would just um sleep in there it was like her usual spot but when we moved my um bedroom uh that really can kind of confused her because we had to move the blanket we had to like move everything and then like like during the whole process we were moving everything she would like like she would just periodically just come in and at one point she was like looking for the blanket and it wasn't there and at one point she ended up going into um the one corner by you um because that's where we ended up um putting the blanket i also remember um when we used to have my desk um over um where mommy's sitting um she would just sit under there because she thought it was safe and right. it was kind of funny but it was also like Dude, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, and the, the funny thing was the room that we moved you into, your new bedroom, was one that was always traditionally kept closed because it was Sam's room and, and there was a lot of, like, storage and stuff in there. We'd keep luggage and stuff in there. So it was an area that she was unfamiliar with. Right. Yeah. Like, almost right. like she didn't even know that that room existed because there was a wall there all the time. Right, yeah. right. So when we moved you... We kept the studio closed, so she kept walking into the door of, of the studio <laughs> trying Thinking to get that in. That was Maddie's room. Uh, right. Like, wait, right. there used. To, I I know there was something here. Because <laughs> like being blind, she memorized like where things were, so she knew where the litter box was, and she knew where your room was in relation to the litter box. So she'd come around the bathroom, either getting a drink of water or whatever, and she'd bump into the door. And then she'd have to center herself and move up and, and find the door to your room. 
So for the first, I don't know, a couple of weeks, it was yeah, it was comical but sad right. <laughs> watching her try to get around with the, the room change. But yeah. once she realized where Maddie's room was and and once we we had things situated now, when Maddie was in, in this room, her, her mattress was, was a little high. When she moved into the her new bedroom, her mattress became even higher and Dorian realized how to get up there. We had a little stool, mm-hmm. you know, by by the foot of her bed or, or by the side of her bed. And Dorian realized, okay, this is where the bed is and managed to still get up on the bed. Right. Like if I was, you know, a cat, I would not have been able to jump from the floor, you know, yeah, as high you up. Yeah, because looking, so. looking at that height, you kind of have to do the math in your head of right. how you jump up there. Yeah, and, and she was doing see, it. She was doing it without. Now there were a couple of times she needed help do you know getting yeah. up there, but overall she was, you know, very spry for, you know, an older, you know, blind cat with, you know, other other conditions. Yeah. So Yeah, she she sub she survived surprisingly well. Mm-hmm. You know, you would see her come downstairs and she'd jump up. Because as soon as she heard someone in the kitchen, mm-hmm. she knew that there was food available somewhere. Right. Yeah. right. So she heard someone in the kitchen. She'd make her way down, and she'd do her little bunny hop down the stairs. Right, right. And she'd and bump into a few walls. She'd bump into a few walls, and she'd sort of use and, her. And it was funny, because she'd go side to side, right. like you know, a, a, a visually impaired person using a cane to mm-hmm. find her yeah, way. Yeah, she would kind of, you know, do the back and forth and yeah. kind of sway. And I think what was funny was for... I think after we realized she was blind, I think we made sure after obviously the the biggest thing was, you know, changing the bedrooms around. But after that, we tried not to move yeah. too much stuff because we didn't want to throw her off. So in the kitchen, you know, where we would have like the sodas on the floor, we always made sure they didn't go right. out too far. Right. And, you know, and, and she then, always knew where home base was. Right. She'd come <laughs> over and she'd think the chair was here and she'd reach up. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember uh, all those get it. She'd move times. a little further. Reach up. Right. No, that's not it. Yeah. Move a little further. Reach oh, up. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then right. she would jump out. Right. So we always had the the, the table in oh. the same place or right. her chair in the same place. What about the one time we actually, like, had to change up the kitchen when we changed the shelf? And, like, um, we actually used to have, like, something behind, like, the chairs. And right. And at one right. point she, like, just traveled right. through. Right. She went she past did, it. It was like, lost. what? What? Wait Where a second. Where the heck am yeah, I? So, so overall we, we tried to, to keep things the same for her and you know and i have to say she was an incredibly persistent cat Mm because like on grocery days when you go grocery shopping Mm -hmm. and every bag's on the floor there would be a path to get to the chair her chair but it wasn't a direct path and she would sit there for 15 minutes (laughs) trying every possible way to get through there there. and she would eventually would get there (laughs) Yeah. yeah Yeah, she so did. She, she was did. she was very persistent. Mm-hmm. So let's take a, a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the uh, less talked about stories. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious! So we've had some not so nice stories about <sighs> Dorian, no. and the one that we bring up quite frequently, which mommy. Is is not particularly keen to talk about is the van incident. <laughs> uh, mommy, did you want to tell us about this? I one? can. I I have no problem telling the van story. Okay, you tell us about the van story. <sighs> so back in the day, um, when um, my my mother had had a a large conversion van um, that they had uh, used for when my father was sick. Um, and after my mom, you know, kind of stopped driving, she gave us the van and you actually for many, you know, for a couple of years actually drove that as your everyday car. Um, well, when, um, my mother had passed away, we kind of used it as a storage <laughs> facility because <laughs> right. yeah. we didn't really have a much, shed on wheels. you know, it was basically yeah. a shed on wheels. So as I was bringing stuff home from my mother's house, and, you know, stuff that I needed to go through, I would just kind of put it, we, we used it, you know, in there. Because by that point, you had stopped driving it, and you were actually driving my mom's other car. Um, 
So every, you know, couple of weekends, if it was nice out, I would go out, you know, to kind of, all right, let me go through two boxes, you know? So I would sit in, you know, with a trash can and go through stuff, figure out, you know, what I was saving and what I wasn't. Um, at this point, Dorian was not staying inside. She wasn't coming in. She was, you know, basically just coming around every couple of days. We'd feed her. She'd go. Um, and if we were ever outside, she was always hanging around with us. So uh, it was the summer and I was out working for, you know, a couple of hours in, in the van and, and whatnot. And I saw her, you know, go in the van and I saw her leave the van. And when I was done, I closed up the van and went inside, um, you know, and later that day looking around for Dorian and we didn't see her. And it was it was no big deal that we, you know, didn't see her. Um, you know, and the next day came, still didn't see her. Um, probably by like the third day I was getting, you know, a little concerned. I even said to you, you know, I don't know, you know, where she is. It's, you know, kind of unlike her to, to not come by at least once a day. Um, so little, you know, footnote to all of this, our neighbor across the street from us had kind of threatened her. Right. At one point, um, because Dorian was hanging around a lot more. And I guess Dorian was using her flower bed as a litter box. So she was just fertilizing. <laughs> she was just fertilizing. <laughs> so the neighbor had had come over the, the one day and banged on the door and was like, is that your cat? And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, and, and basically said she was going to call the pound and, and have the cat picked up. And, you know, so I was really kind of worried because, all right, now I'm not seeing Dorian, just you know, a week or so ago, the neighbor this irate neighbor's threatening is her. threatening. Oh my God, something happened. Um, so it was you know getting close to almost being a a week. Yes, sweetie. Um, would it be okay if I tell the rest because I'm actually I can act I actually have an experience with the rest. Sure. I. Is it okay? Yeah, that's fine. Continue? Okay, so... It's your show. You can tell a story. <laughs> it's your show. I'm just So, continuing on with you said, it's been... It was almost a week, um, and we hadn't seen Doi, and, um... Um, I think at one point you mentioned it. I don't... Did... Have you ever... Did you ever mention it to me? Well, I, I, I had mentioned that we hadn't seen her, and what I had actually been doing was I... A couple of times, I went and walked around the house... Just to see, because there were a couple of little hiding spots that she had, mm -hmm. um, just to see if she was there or if she was hurt. Because I was just afraid that if you had gone out to play and there was a dead cat in our backyard, you would have freaked out. So that was kind of, I was kind of doing that to make sure you didn't find, you know, find her. Oh, so okay. that that's... You know, so I would go out and I would look and I would see if, you know, I could find her. And obviously I, I didn't. Yeah. So, um, back to the, um, um, the, it was a week. Um, so I remember I was helping you, um, throw out, um, some trash bags. Mm -hmm. And at one point we heard a faint meow. Meow, and meow. <laughs> Really? Well, that's really what we heard. Yeah, yeah. Um, you would ask me if I was saying it, and I said <laughs> no, and I asked you if you, and like, then we, and then we noticed it was coming from the van. Because <laughs> we did have the windows <laughs> cracked in the van for right, ventilation. Right, right. Yeah. Fortunately, so, we had done that. So, um, so mommy and I walked over to the van, and you opened it, and we found Doyd inside. And she ran out, and... <laughs> Meow, 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 for like five minutes straight. And, and well, and the moral of the story is you had inadvertently locked her in because right. she didn't announce her presence in there. Right. But ultimately, in the end, you were the one that saved her, too. Absolutely. So yeah. that's the one way to look at she, it. She was, she, you know, she didn't run away after getting out of the van. She was obviously very hungry, very thirsty. And I think because she had been an outside cat and a hunter cat, 
she probably was used to going days without right. food or water, as opposed to a, a house cat who freaks well, out when your bowl was a, empty. She was a pretty beefy cat at the time, too. Right, so. and at that point, she did end up losing, <laughs> yeah, losing some weight from being in the van for for almost a week, yeah. but. You but know. in the end, it was fine. She mm-hmm. turned out okay. She yep. was saved, and everyone lived happily ever after. Yep, sure did. So there's another, I, I wouldn't say this is a, a specific incident or specific story that comes to mind, but she had a habit that was kind of a disgusting habit. Oh. <laughs> so oh. I, would, I would come upstairs, and, and we have a bathroom upstairs and a bathroom downstairs, and Dorian... Probably being an outdoor cat was very fond of fresh water, oh. and the, we happened to have a toilet at the time that had a slight leak in it, and it never stopped filling the bowl because it always leaked slightly into the bowl, and as a result, the water was always relatively fresh. So you would come up the stairs, you would make the right to go towards the bathroom, and you would see Dorian's butt. <laughs> Propped up on the edge of the toilet with her two paws in the bowl of the toilet mm. as she drank out of the toilet bowl. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was pretty disgusting. <laughs> and you didn't seem to have a problem with that, Mommy. I was just kind of like, all right. Yeah. You know. um, well, and, and the other thing, too, is because when she would be outside, she would find, you know, we would have different, you know, um, little tiny potholes. She would make tea. <laughs> she would drink from little puddles that I'm like, it's, you know, so oh, yeah. <laughs> toilet water versus that. Yeah. I was thinking the toilet was a heck of a lot cleaner than, yeah. you know, some of the little puddles <laughs> well, that she yeah. was drinking from. And, and ultimately, when she wasn't able to get around anymore and couldn't jump up and balance on a toilet, you would resort it to leaving a fresh bowl of water upstairs in the bathroom for right. her every morning and she was able to get her her fresh water that way right and then and, and then she got belligerent from that and whenever the bowl was empty she got and she'd knock the bowl over and she knocked the bowl over. well i think that was oh, yeah. also dorothy too because dorothy because and then that was the other thing too that leota and dorothy were like oh there's water up here yeah. <laughs> why did we have to go down there you know and and they started getting used to it and now we still I <laughs> still have the water, you know, upstairs, yeah. you know, and, and you'll see Dorothy sitting there or Leota, you know, first thing in the morning getting a, a drink of water. Cause. So, you know, I, I think the bottom line is I think she had a pretty good life with us. I mm-hmm. think I think she contributed greatly to our lives. Uh, I think we contributed to her life. And I think, you know, I think we're all better off having her in our lives. Yeah, Absolutely. Why am I thinking we should talk about the relationship she had with the other cats? I think that's worthwhile. Go right ahead and talk about it. Alrighty, so... First off, at the time that she was coming around, we did um, have our cat Fluffer. Um, and although those two didn't really talk too much, it was sort of like... Well, Fluffer was sort of the guardian of me. She would sleep with me, um, keep me company, and stuff right. like that. And... um. At times, you would see, like, um, it was actually kind of funny. We actually had a photo of it. So, Darth, um, on one side, on the inside, um, you'd find Fluffer looking out of our front door because we have a glass um, barrier uh, door thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, We don't throw stones, though, so we're okay. (laughs) So, um, and on the other side, on the outside, you just see um, Dorian, and they'd basically just been looking at each other, and we said they were having, like, a little talk or conference. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of funny. And by the time Fluffer had sadly passed away, um, Dorian had sort of taken over that role. Um, Basically, (coughs) like, she had known that... She had basically known how... Fluffer was getting older and how um, she knew that I would be devastated. So um, she basically became, she basically took over Fluffer's role in taking care of me. Yeah, there was kind of a passing of the torch moment between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Um, So the next relationship is going to be with Leota. So 
there is a um, love-hate relationship. Yeah. So when Dory had started coming inside, I noticed that Leota would always want to like bump into her and like sort of hug her, and that was not very appealing to Dorian. Um, especially like I noticed it when she was blind. Um, Leota would always like bump into her if she was about to go into a wall, lead her away, and she was honestly doing that because she loved her. But Dorian never really appreciated it and would whack her occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> and I remember, mm -hmm. like, one time, I actually have a chair in my room where she would um, normally sit. And Leota, at some point, had started going in there as well. Um, actually, a few, uh, about two months ago. And at one point, I just see, like, um, Dorian just literally goes on, like, Leo it was clearly Yoda sat there first, <laughs> and then I just find that Dorian basically climbed up there and laid on Leota, yep. and that's not the first time she and, did that. And, and Leota was perfectly fine with that. Yeah, Leota, Leota didn't mind at all, and obviously a lot of the pictures from, from the movie, um, Leota is, is predominant, you know, in it, and I think, you know, to towards the end, Leota Leota definitely became her seeing eye cat. Yeah, you know we joke about it, but she really you know was there to to help her. And there would be times when Leota was already you know laying on the couch or laying on me, and Dorian would come up, and Dorian just did not care. And she'd be like, <laughs> do, "Do do do do, I'm gonna lay on top of you," and Leota would just be like, "And that's okay. the thing, like." <laughs> You know, Leota she care. Was, she was okay happy with, that. with any kind of attention that she got yep. from Dorian. Yep. Yeah. Um, which was which was cute. I mean, yeah. You could tell that, like, Leota and and Dorothy were the closest in age, and they right. were together. You know, since we got them. Right. But they were like squabbling sisters. Right. You know, they never. Occasionally, you'd see them get together, and, and they cuddle nap every and now and then. Cuddle and stuff. Right. Yeah. But you know, Dorothy's always the troublemaker. Right. Yeah. And and she, Leota really took to Dorian as mm -hmm. that that older cat that she looked up to, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, like the tried to do sister. anything for her. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So tell us the relationship that Dorothy had. With <laughs> oh, oh, this is gonna be great. So let's just say, picture our cats as they think of them as a pack. At least Dorothy thinks, and. She basically wants to be the alpha cat. And with Dorian coming, like, she totally knew she was the alpha cat when it was just her, um, Fluffer and, um, Leota, because Dorothy was dominant. Um, but when Dorian came around, she was older than Dorothy, and, um, she was clearly dominant, um, as well. And Dorothy basically saw her as competition. So... As you can imagine, the two of them never got along. Doya never tried to do anything to her, but it was clear that Dorothy did not like her. Right. Um, like, Dorothy would occasionally, when she was blind, Dorothy would, like, occasionally just come upstairs to eat, and, like, she'd be leaving to go to my room or go upstairs. And um, sometimes she would ignore her. Other times um, they'd get into a fight and we'd have to lock her up yep. because she was being <laughs> a bad cat. Um... So yeah, it was clear those two never really got along. I mean, I don't know um, Dorian's feelings to her. Um, she never really hit her back or anything. Um, oh, she did. Oh, she did. Oh yeah, many times. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but she never started. And that was that right, was the that interesting was the dynamic. Was that like when when we got the two kittens, we still had Fluffer, and Fluffer was the elder cat at that point in time. So Dorothy wanted to be the alpha cat. Uh, Leota was okay with that, and Fluffer was just indifferent. She didn't care. She was like, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And then mm -hmm. when Dorian started coming around and she started coming in the house, Dorian was a big, powerful, outdoor hunter cat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dorian was the alpha. Yeah. And Dorothy didn't like that. So nope. Dorothy would try to, like, intimidate her, and Dorian <laughs> would have none of that. You know, Dorothy would get into a fight, and she'd hit her, and Dorian would come back and whack her and, like, almost knock her out when she would hit her. And Dorothy would immediately back down from it. So she was a lot of bluster. Like, she she didn't really, couldn't stand up to her because she didn't have the power. So later on, after the stroke and when she was blind, 
Dorothy started to take advantage of that. Right, right. And mm-hmm. and what was funny was even blind, like oh, not yeah. being able to see like, anything, she yeah. was still able to land blows on Dorothy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that shocked her because you know Dorothy was like, "Ha I can get you." Yeah, and she'd go whack and just, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, and she would just get stunned. So they they always kind of had a. Uh, Hate relationship. It, uh, yeah, they kind of yeah, had a ne- competition. Yeah, they 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 never. You would never see them cuddling. You no, know? no, no, it didn't happen. Nearby. Like if they could pass each other in the hall without hitting each other, that was that, about as civil exactly, as they got. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah um, so I mean, Dorothy was able to. Well, I'm just gonna say they were re- they weren't able to tolerate each other. Um, they only were able to tolerate each other because Dorothy knew that she would get in trouble if she had hit her. But sometimes the hatred built up in her and she couldn't stand it. Right. Yeah. So occasionally they would come to blows and, and mm-hmm. let, let off a little steam. Yeah, yeah. But for the most part, they, they got along. They kept to their territories. Each, you know, the house was broken up into territories. Yeah. Oh, the house was so broken up into <laughs> territories. You had it neutral was, zones where right. you could transition, but you didn't stay. Right. You know, yeah. the, you know, the, the kitchen, kitchen right. was a neutral zone. Yeah, right. that was And the even in the kitchen, everybody had everyone their, had their spots. areas. Yeah. You know, Dorian yeah. sat next to me. And Leota and Dorothy could kind of be, you know, right. elsewhere fl- and, and um, stuff. And yeah, Dorothy normally, like, was on your side, and Leota would, like, sometimes be under the little stool. Yeah. Um, she'd be by there, and she'd, like, lay... Oh, yeah. They also had a habit of laying in front of the fridge, because... Yeah, they the always like well, that, Well, because the heat that comes right. out of the fridge. Well, yeah. and even for the longest time, when we had two litter boxes... Dorothy, you know, that was Dorothy's litter box. She only used the one downstairs, and right. Leota and, and Dorian would use the upstairs one. Now, you know, it, it's just the one. So that was a, a big transition, yeah. too, because it was like, sorry, um, you know, because it was like, <laughs> wait a second, who's in the litter box? And, yep. you know, is it my turn? Can I go? And, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, it was, I mean, it just, it's a small house, you know, it's kind of small for three cats, especially when two of them don't get along very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they may do. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, even Dorothy kind of feels that, that loss, you know, mm-hmm. she knows she's not around. She knows something's up. Um, I think, uh, I think Leota profoundly feels it. She yeah. seems very different now. Mm-hmm. She's much more cuddly with people where she really was very standoffish to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh. I think she's still trying to cope with the loss at this point. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're at about fifteen minutes here. I think we we addressed all the stuff that I wanted to talk about. Was there any other anecdotes or anything you guys wanted to mention? Did you want to show your your artwork? Oh yeah. So since Doyen had um, passed a few days ago, I decided to take some time to. Oh, before make- you show that though. Go ahead. What you were gonna say? I want to preface it before you show it. Um, to make some, to basically make a memorial for her. So this podcast itself was supposed to be a uh, creative. What were we gonna Art call? Po- um, talents. Creative talents podcast, where we were gonna showcase uh, some of your artwork and your writings and stuff like that. And given the loss of. Of Dorian, we decided to preempt that. Mm-hmm. Um, but as kind of a preview of what that show is going to be, you painted this portrait of her. Yeah, it's not completely finished. It only I only put in two hours since apparently I decided starting <laughs> at eight thirty eight p.m. was the best idea <laughs> to paint. <laughs> but you know. All right, Picasso. Let's see. All righty. Uh, uh, that's behind the microphone. There, there you go. go. Look at that. Um, I still have a few pieces that aren't fully colored in, but I definitely think after two hours, um, it's definitely good. I think it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Yeah. And I, probably by next week, it'll be complete. And, and I uh, might even have a few others because I'm well, planning Well, you technically on- have two weeks because next week is our grandparents' one. Yeah. Right. So you have two weeks to finish your artwork. So. Wait, and spoiler we'll alert. Be- spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that that was probably all we wanted to cover today. Mm-hmm. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we spent some time celebrating the, the special cat that she was. 
and the place that she she played in our lives. Uh, we did um, we buried her today. Um, so when when we had her put down at the vet, uh, the vet was kind enough to put her in a, a little not a coffin, but a little cardboard a cardboard and, yeah uh, casket that yeah. that we could bury her in, and, <clears throat> and we dug through. Three or four layers of roots this morning yeah. in the pouring rain. Yeah, that was was commitment. very appropriate for yeah. you know yeah. for what we had to do. So. Yeah, that was a commitment. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, she has she will remain with the house. She has a little memorial outside with uh, some cat statues, and uh, she will be missed, but she will be remembered. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was all we had. Uh, so if we haven't depressed you enough uh, <laughs> from watching any more of our episodes, uh, I'm not going to run down all the contact links. I will say that you can subscribe to both our audio and our video podcast. Our audio podcast is uh, Insights into uh, Teens. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Podbean, anywhere you can get a, a podcast. And our video version of the podcast is a generic video link for all of our podcasts at Insights Into Things, also on all major podcast networks. And if we didn't have anything else, I think that was all we had, right? I yeah. think so. So thank you, Dorian, for what you've given us, and we will miss you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.